The end of the DLC of God of War Ragnarok left us with many great moments, and one of the best scenes at the end, where overall, you can see the affection with which this expansion was made, even with so little. In this new adventure, we will learn more about Kratos' future, progressing through a level system that we must constantly surpass, defeating enemies of all kinds. In this journey, we must face our past as the ghost of Sparta to finally overcome it. Let's review then, from the beginning, the story of God of War Valhalla, and my opinion about it. It all begins with Kratos sailing on his boat, accompanied by Mimir, and guided by a mysterious note, which ends up leading them to the very gates of Valhalla. After arriving at this place, our protagonists decide to force their way through and finally begin their search. After facing some enemies inside and dying, so to speak, we are taken back to the shore, next to the gates of Valhalla, where we are found by Freya and the Valkyries. In short, the purpose of Valhalla is somehow to purge sins and the past through trials and challenges, which vary for each individual. Armed with this new information, we re-enter Valhalla. The path inside is full of enemies and visions of the past, where we can see several familiar faces along our journey, along with significant events about Kratos' past. To overcome the trials, we must face our worst enemies, and I'm not talking about trolls, but our own past mistakes. Once we advance a bit in Valhalla, we learn that it was Tyr who gave us the note leading us here. He is inside Valhalla with us and will help us through this journey to overcome our past through battles and some conversations. On this journey, we will be in iconic places of Greek mythology, where, for example, in some parts the head of Helios will accompany us, one of the many gods Kratos killed. The thing is that all of Valhalla is shaped based on the memories and experiences of each one, with the Greek era being one of the most important for Kratos. In one of the trials, we are deceived at first glance, and everything seems to indicate that Mimir would die because of us, causing, in a moment of panic, to break the rules of Valhalla. This makes us begin to fall into a reddish abyss, where we can see the chain of balance, which indicates that the place we would be falling into is the Tartarus, the Greek hell, where Zeus sent the Titans to suffer after the war. This happens because, by breaking the rules, Valhalla would punish us in this way, as we saw previously in other trials, using memories and places from our past. But before finishing falling, we are saved by Sigrun. Knowing now that we must play by the already defined rules, and owing our life to Sigrun, we re-enter Valhalla with more experience and ready to face our mistakes from another point of view. Inside, we will see various events from Kratos' history, which seek for him to find mental clarity. Among these events, we can see how he killed the barbarian king Alric, or even the death of Pandora, who was completely innocent, caused by our thirst for revenge. The thing is that all these visions and memories, as Tyr tells us, can be seen from another side, from a more understanding one, without fully justifying his actions, of course, but rather accepting them and improving based on them. After many memories, battles, and introspection about the past, Kratos is finally ready to be a new, worthy god. However, we still had to prove that we were effective in combat, fighting a duel with Tyr, which ends up being quite challenging. With a bit of difficulty, we can get Tyr to finally surrender and give us access to the last door. Once we enter it, we can see a projection of ourselves as the ghost of Sparta. The intention of this scene is to show us that confrontation with our past self, which we must finally let go of, to make room for something new. This scene is very well done, and if you haven't seen it yet, you should. After reflecting a bit and finally accepting that hope comes from trying to be better, relating to the dialogue with Pandora in the previous game, the figure of the ghost of Sparta finally disappears, giving way to the new Kratos, who would now be the god of hope. There are various theories about what now awaits Kratos. Some say that it is most likely that we will see him traveling to other kingdoms, facing other gods and beasts, while he becomes a new god, completely leaving behind his past as the ghost of Sparta, and becoming a symbol of redemption and hope for the people. This would make sense, seeing how they are developing his character. These new theories involve topics such as Christianity, which, by the way, is confirmed to exist within their universe and could be very interesting to see. In any case, I plan to upload a video in the future, talking more in depth about all this and where the story of God of War might be going. But returning to the DLC and giving you my final thoughts about it and the story as such, it seems very well achieved, since although it doesn't end up being something super complex, that is not its intention, 
but rather to expand the development and story of the characters we previously played in Ragnarok. It also has many interesting dialogues as we progress within Valhalla, in which they mention past events and also talk about very interesting things regarding their characters. There are some new enemies like the Minotaurs, which give more personality to these new scenarios, and the trials and combat end up being really fun. If you like the combat of these last God of War games, you are sure to enjoy it. But speaking of the story as such, its duration is not very long and I think that as a complement to God of War Ragnarok, being something free, it seems very appropriate. If you liked the video, I remind you quickly to subscribe and leave a like to support the channel, and of course to stay tuned for future videos. Let me know your opinions about the video in the comments. Until next time.